There we go. I see some people joining. Hope everyone's having a good Thursday afternoon. So while we uh, while we're waiting, Luke, uh, we're gonna hang a couple minutes until uh, to let some more people join. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to take a little note out of Chris Dolan's book and I got you some uh some dad jokes. Oh, please come on with it. Okay. And we're we are not any type of dad jokes. We are strictly doing uh biblical dad jokes today. Okay. Okay. Um I promise they're safe though. <laughs> so, first one, do you know the greatest comedian in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Who's that? That'd be Samson. He brought down the house. Oh, um, that's that's a good one. Um, who was the most business savvy woman in the Bible? Um, I mean, my guess says Lydia, but I'm sure there's a better it's answer. answer. It's a good answer. You're wrong, but yeah. uh, it, I'm used it, to that. Pharaoh's daughter, uh, she went to the bank of the Nile and mm. pulled out a little profit. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. And uh, let's see. Sticking with the, the Moses theme, mm -hmm. uh, who is the most wicked man in the Bible? Wicked man. Man, you got me. Who? Moses. He broke all Ten Commandments at the same at time. One time. Oh, I should have seen that one coming. That's good. You got That's... So, okay. What time? We'll give one more minute here. I, I did have a backup. Um, you know, I think I'm pretty cool with all the all the technology I use. Um mm -hmm. But then I remembered even way back when Moses downloaded the Ten Commandments from the cloud onto two tablets. Yeah. I, a buddy gave me a shirt that says that actually today. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Come. Today I got that shirt. Yeah. Today? Today, yes. Now it's, I'm disappointed you didn't wear it. I, well, sovereignty of God. I can grab it, but. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Well, let's see. It's uh, 302. We'll give everybody a little bit more time. Yeah. Um, we are kicking off though. We can, I'll start kicking off. Um, thanks for joining us. Number one, Luke, for this, uh, oh, pleasure. A bit about how you and, uh, Glenn Meadows, uh, kind of prepare for Easter service. Mm -hmm. Um, just, I'll give everybody a little bit of background on you. Uh, Luke is a, uh, you, you were raised in Dallas, correct? Yes, sir. You're, you're, what is that? Da Dallas CN? Uh, da uh, Dallas, Texas? No, but what, you know, what do you call somebody from Dallas? Oh, I gotcha. Uh, you know, I don't actually know. Just yeah. awesome, I think. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. But you've, li you've lived around the state. It looks like in East Texas, Central Texas. Now you're yeah. in West Texas. That's right. Uh, your, uh, your wife, is it Summer, been married. Summer, that's right. Been married 15 years. Yeah, going on. And so, you live in san angelo san angelo okay yeah. and you, she, your wife also works at glen meadows she does she serves as our uh, women's discipleship coordinator okay so you are the pastor of discipleship ministries mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. you both work there and then i love this part um it sounds like you have three golden doodles that's a very yes. manly, manly dog yeah that's right that's right and i can yeah. tell you three is too many so i advise against it but that's, it's fun sound, that's awesome and kids Sounds yes, like you have a couple or yeah. one. Go ahead. We've got one that uh, we're fostering currently, moving towards adoption, awesome. uh, and then we've got another on the way. He's due in May, May second. Awesome. Well, good to hear a little bit about you. Um, and so, what I'd love to do is just kind of spend our our time here together today, and just kind of ask you some questions about how you. Um, not only get ready for Easter, but how you do Easter service and then what your follow up is and whatnot afterwards as well. Sure. So um, to kind of start us off, um, what does Easter look like at Glen Meadows um, for people coming to the church? You know, like how how do you all do Easter? Yeah. So for 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 everyone, it's a it's pretty much the same as a regular Sunday, just kind of kicked up a couple notches. 
And so we do, we add like some extra seating in to help with some of the, you know, the visitors that are coming. Uh, for all the members, we try to freshen everything up. And so we put like new hallway pictures. We've got pictures of uh, just ministry activities and fellowships and all of that throughout our hallways. So we freshen a lot of those, update all the flowers and greenery around the church just to give it a new fresh feel, right? Um, yep. We put up photo booths as well on Easter. And so we usually launch some new photo booths that day, which is exciting. Um, fresh graphics on the kids' check-in screen. So on each check-in screen, we currently have our logo. And so there'll be a special one there for that. Um, and then we update, this one's exciting. We update the activities bags for the kids uh, to include different coloring books, fidget toys, and all that kind of good stuff. So their parents aren't hitting them during Easter service and all of that. Um, one thing that's that's a little bit different um, on about Easter for our members is we we try to make it more of a missional Sunday. Uh, obviously, every day is a missional Sunday, but this one, there's just the chance to uh, minister to people that may not normally come, but since it's Easter, you know, people are more inclined to. And so starting on the 10th of this month, we're going to give them what we call invite a friend bags, and they'll include different invitations and postcards and things like that, just to try to help equip them to easily invite their, their folks. And we do yard signs and stuff like that. So, but for, for visitors, it'll be a little bit different in that uh, normally we have like a connections counter and it's just a, you know, a handful of people, but on Easter Sunday, we're going to have a couple extra venues. Um, we've got a lot of physical space constraints with our current building. And so we've got to get a little bit creative. And so uh, we're going to set up kind of a, a canopy outside where we're going to have coffee and just kind of a welcoming area, as well as a, a guest reception area in one of our courtyards. And so uh, we're excited about that. Obviously, extra volunteers and, and the whole yard, whole nine yards. Do, do you know how many... Uh, uh over a normal Sunday, like what percentage? Yeah. Um, so normally on a normal Sunday, we'll be ready for. Yeah. It's a, it's about a uh, 30 to 50% increase. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Now does Glen Meadows do, um, is it a one day Easter event or do you do anything leading up to Easter? Yeah. So uh, every other year we do a Seder meal, either on Monday, Thursday or on good Friday. Um, this year is one of our off years. And so we did it last year. We like to put a year in between just so that it doesn't become uh, just super normal. Like we want people to still be excited about it. Yep. And so this year we're we're focusing on that kind of missional aspect to where we're preparing our people uh, from stage through our small groups and just trying to really emphasize um, the opportunities that we have at this season for just spreading the gospel and inviting people to church. Very cool. Yeah. Um, the next thing I was going to ask you is when when do you and the rest of the church really start planning for Easter? Yeah, um, it never feels like it's soon enough, right? Sure. Uh, especially this year with Easter. I, I don't know if it's actually early, but it feels very early. And so uh, we like to start planning at the beginning of the year, uh, like first week back in January. Okay. Um, we had some switches, some changes on our comms team this year. And so we didn't start until the beginning of this month, which was uh, it's made for a, a hectic month. That's for sure. Um, but we really like to start drilling down on everything uh, right after the Christmas holiday, because uh, we use we use this time to, as as like a milestone to try to accomplish certain things. And so uh, one thing for us this year is we're going to be implementing a fresh website and it's going to be the Touchpoint sites. And we're really nice. excited about that. That should be launching actually next week, um, next Wednesday, I think. Congrats so, on that. And, and yeah. great, great plug, by the way. Thank yeah, do you like that? I was, I was yeah. hoping yeah. <laughs> it worked that in well. I'll watch for my discount code later, but yeah. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Um, how about tell me a little bit on the uh, uh, the kids ministry side? Um, what's that look like? Yeah. Um, do you do any worship stuff there? Staff? Yeah, yeah. Um, all so the for... all the stuff to get ready for that the influx of the kiddos. Mm -hmm. So one thing we we try to do is we don't want Easter Sunday to be so drastically different from any other Sunday that uh, visitors may feel like they get kind of like a bait and switch kind of a thing. And so we try to keep real close to our our normal model. Uh, it's just a little bit more polished. Um, and one of the one of the things we're doing a little bit differently this year is the kids department has historically not done their their normal activities. And so except for birth through five or kinder, I think gets uh, child care, but five or kinder through fifth grade has normally not done anything just because a lot of the volunteers 
uh, they take off on that day. Yeah. And so uh, we were talking this year and we thought, man, that's a that's a missed opportunity. Right. Like uh, there's the old adage, the kids determine where the parents go to church. Right. And so yep. we thought, man, let's let's show the kids a good time. Let's figure out something that we can do to, you know, just engage them. And so we're actually throwing an Easter party uh, on on that Sunday and it's going to be glow in the dark themed. And so there should be a lot of fun around that. And hopefully uh, the kids will have a good time and drag their parents back. Right. Nice. Uh, but as far as the the staff is concerned, uh, one of the the key focuses uh, for us is for everyone to make sure and be very diligent about having their hands free on Easter Sunday morning, which is that's a huge ask. That's that's a lot to ask of our staff members who normally have hands on their various ministries. But uh, the goal is that they can be extremely available to connect with those who are visiting. And so uh, each ministry has man just a slew of volunteers, and so. We're kind of cashing in some of our our equity chips, getting yeah. the volunteers to be there on on Easter. But uh, man, genuinely, I think it's it's absolutely worth it. It's just that one time a year again when people who wouldn't normally be there are going to come, and so we got to capitalize on it. Yeah, especially having that, you know, having the kiddos, yeah, and having yeah. To serve all the, you know that many volunteers. You're is you must be able to have a lot more volunteers this year than you have in the past. Yeah, you know, we've been working really hard um, since last August, just trying to fertilize the soil so that we can um, just grow up a bunch of volunteers. And so our connections team is stronger than it's been in a long time. And it's it's just been a, a lot of work to get it that way. Okay. Now, brings up a good question, like, uh, logistically speaking, mm -hmm. to communicate with all those volunteers and everybody coming to church on Easter Sunday. Yeah. with everything you're doing, what does that look like? How do you do that? Yeah. So on the logistics side, um, I mentioned that we try to keep it mostly the same as far as the structure goes. One thing that we do add is we add a um, early morning sunrise service. And so okay. we've got some property across uh, the street from us where we're planning on building. So hopefully we'll start building in the next year or two. Nice. Um, but until then, we try to leverage it for various activities uh, like a sunrise service. And so we'll have that as well as uh, I mentioned kind of our, our space constraints earlier. Our, our parking is not great. And so in order to facilitate everybody coming in, we have we have to cancel Sunday schools on that day, because if we've got folks who are parked there for Sunday school and folks that are parked there for services, there's just not enough. And we have to turn people away. And so and we definitely don't want to do that, especially on Easter. Uh, right. And so, I mean, with with those things that uh, we just try to over communicate that. So it's the email and texting campaigns. Do we do those through Touchpoint and then it's website, which will be through Touchpoint um, and then the social media plugs. We just try to saturate it. But the what we rely on most to make sure our members know is because it's very easy, as we all know, to just disregard emails or leave texts unread or, or what have you. Um, but we really try to rely on our ministry leads, so the youth uh, pastor, the children's director, and specifically their volunteers to communicate that with their people, yes, through email, through text, um, but primarily through their small group leaders who have the ear okay. of, all of the all of the people in the church. And so uh, we try to leverage that structure uh, in order to just get the word out. Got it. So, so going made me think, of, going back to the volunteers, um, you know, you said you started working in August, you mm -hmm. know, to, to, I forget what you said, soften, soften the ground, I believe. Yeah, fertilize yeah. the soil. Fertilize, or, yeah, fertilize, yeah. A, fertilize, Softening the ground uh, sounds a little more appropriate, though, doesn't it? So. I mean, fertilize, <laughs> that's fine. Um, tell me a little bit about how you're doing that, how you're, mm -hmm. you know, encouraging those volunteers, how you are um, fertilizing those, mm -hmm. those volunteers, uh, because that's a, that's a big ask on yeah. a big day, yeah. obviously. That's um, right. And so what's, how are, how are you doing that? Yeah. I, I mentioned a second ago that our, our connections team is, it, it nearly doubles actually. I think she's got a slide of our normal, um, our normal Sunday versus our Easter Sunday. And I think it goes from 11 people on the connections team, uh, to 25, close to 25 people. Uh, okay. Just because, again, we want it. We want to oversaturate so that nobody slips through the cracks, so that we can um, we can hit everyone as as well as we possibly can, right? Uh, and so, in order to do that, um, man, fortunately, we have we have a pastor who has a heart for serving. Uh, okay. I think if he had his druthers, 
we wouldn't have any staff members. It would all be volunteers. Yep. Um, but you know, obviously that's not practical. We try it as much as we can. All that to say, uh, from stage, he's continually beating the drum of service. And so we're in a sermon series that's going through the book of Philippians right now, and it's called Like Jesus. And the last two weeks consecutively, one was Obey Like Jesus, and then it was Serve Like Jesus. And so he just kind of primes the pump for us. And so he just kind of softens the ground, like you said, uh, throws some fertilizer on there, like I said, uh, and just gets people primed for it. And then it's... Um, <clears throat> It's a message they're used to hearing. And so when we come up with the asks, it's easy to draw from those things that they've heard. Um, besides that, we've got that that missional campaign that we're starting on the 10th just to kind of prime the pump. And we're going to we're going to uh, express all of the possible opportunities for them to plug in. And and we'll make some asks through our staff and uh, our lay leaders through their small groups uh, in an ideal scenario. And we've fortunately we have this on the youth side. Um it will be small groups who take ownership of specific areas of volunteering. And so I'm actually personally working on my small group, my life group uh, to join the connection side so that we can help beef that up. And the, um, the youth, man, there's like two life groups that essentially own youth ministry. Uh, and it's just an amazing thing because it just galvanizes the life group and they get to serve alongside each other and uh, minister together in a way that they wouldn't otherwise. So um, we do that. And then, then the other thing we do is we we make volunteering, signing up for volunteering very easy. And so um, you can go into our app and just register from the app. Uh, it's the custom app. And we've got an involvement called Start Serving. And it's just a real okay. quick, easy uh, registration process for them to get on the radar of a specific ministry. So if they click Connections, that comes to me. I get to see them, vet them, put them through any training that they need to go through and then get them out there working. That's awesome. So you, you mentioned before that, you know, some of the some of the tools and ways that you use TouchPoint um, to work with your staff and uh, to prevent people from slipping through the cracks. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do after, you know, somebody comes to the church for the first time? Yeah. Um, what how do you use, to, whether it be technology or other other systems, volunteers, whatever, mm -hmm. to continue to engage with those people um, after their first visit. You know, we yeah. have some first time visitors on Easter, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're not we're not necessarily a mega church, but we're also not small. Um, okay. And so it, it would be uh, nearly impossible for the staff to be the sole people responsible for engaging in a meaningful way all of the visitors and following up with them. And so uh, we, as I've mentioned earlier, we rely heavily on our lay leaders, our life group leaders, Sunday school leaders and all of that. Um, and the people that are in their groups. And so I say all that to say um, what we try to do is once a visitor comes in, they fill out a card, they express uh, areas of interest, whether it be men's ministry, youth, kids, what have you. Uh, and then we as staff get those first, us and some really high functioning volunteers. And then we call them and try to connect them to a small group that's appropriate for them, for their interests, for their um, stage of life, all that kind of good stuff. And so our, our goal is to get them in the hands of a small group leader, life group or Sunday school leader. Uh, okay. And then at that point, we kind of pull back so that that person, the leader of that group can become their primary contact uh, for getting plugged in and engaged. And so at that point, they become essentially their lay pastor and they're, they're the ones okay. that follow up with them. Uh, and every week at every meeting, they take attendance and uh, each time uh, they take attendance. If it's if there's a person who's absent more than twice, um, they get a task uh, through the system. And okay. so then the leader themselves can follow up with that person uh, and just, you know, check up on them, make sure everything's good and all of that. Uh, fortunately, our our folks are, man, they're just so relational and social, like uh, they know what's going on with that person even before they're absent twice. And so uh, most of the time it's, oh, yeah, I know what's going on. They'll say a quick prayer for them and then complete the task. Okay. So, very good. Yeah. And that's, um, you know, that it sounds, it sounds really great. It's about 65% realized, right. And then 30% aspiration and then about 5% running around with our hair on fire. Uh, just kind of like, Oh, what do we do here? What do we do? And so it's, it's good though. We're, we're really enjoying it. Sure. Now is the normal, the normal follow-up different than Easter? So with Easter, um, I mentioned earlier that we we like to um, kind of roll out some new initiatives. And so yep. uh, we have never done a, a drip campaign of any sort, whether it's through email or text. And so 
Uh, this year, we're going to leverage Easter for that. And so we're hoping to, in fact, I, I threw together a, a process and process builder. Um, and this will be kind of the general outline uh, for what we what we follow. And so they'll get an initial text message uh, followed by an initial email. And so we've I've coupled both texting and email to where they'll get uh, one of those each each week. And it's going to be about something different. And so with Easter, we get to kind of customize and target our communication based upon Easter. And so we're going to kind of test this out and see what kind of responses we get from this. And um, I trust that it's um, I'm fairly confident it will become a, the backbone of, uh, of all of our follow-ups in the future. And so we can do the same thing. Once this works well, it's proven, uh, then we could do the same thing with a first-time visitor. And so aside from this, I think the main difference for our Easter follow-up is just going to be uh, the sheer volume. And so okay. we'll solicit some of the uh, help from those small group leaders and even um, the coaches who are over the small group leaders. We'll probably pull them in to do a lot of the phone calls and the follow-ups. Okay. We're, we're good. Yeah. And have since you started doing some of the some of the stuff you've been talking about, how has how have you seen Glen Meadows uh, grown or what what have you seen because of some of this, uh, these yeah. procedures and yeah. different things that you're doing there? One thing, one thing that I like about it is um, I like and I, I don't think this is a control thing. It might be a control thing, but I like being able okay. to see. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm choosing to believe it's not right. I get to decide my motivation. So I'm going to choose that. Um, it's uh, I get to see everything that's going on. Uh, and so I get to kind of feel the pulse of what's happening with uh, our visitors, know why they're there, uh, where their interests are, kind of who's who's attracted to our church and why. And then I get to note, like, look at all the notes of the follow ups. So I get to check in on our, our ministers who are doing those and even our lay leaders and just kind of see what's going on in different people's lives so that when we've handed them off, um, it's not necessarily over, but I don't have the responsibility because someone else has that responsibility of following up with this person. And so I get to see them in the hallway and I can still know what's going on in their life and be apprised of all of that just through all of these systems that are in place without having that just that stress in my heart, like, oh, no, I didn't follow up with this person or, oh, no, that person, I haven't talked to them in so long. And so yeah. it's really helped us on that front. Uh, not to mention just allowing us to um, just kind of offload some of the ministry. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, I mean that in a positive way, as Paul says in Ephesians 4, that we are to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And so this is a very convenient and easy way for us to do that. And it, it just makes the most sense for us to do it that way. Um, uh, to those absentee reports or to those absentee calls, uh, we had a couple recently, a young couple, they've kind of been church shopping around town. They visited with us and hit one of our life groups. And um, they kind of, because life gets busy, they they stopped going and we're out for a couple of weeks. But that life group leader specifically was diligent in following up, checking on them, and let them know that we missed them. Uh, and so they they came back and now they're, they're plugged in and serving uh, and in a really great capacity. And so we're uh, really enjoying that. And that's just one of, of the many stories that we have for that. Very cool. Yeah. One, one other question is, you mentioned attendance before. Mm -hmm. Is how you you normally attend, or excuse me, track attendance? Does that change at all during Easter? Yeah, um, for for processing the new folks, so we don't take attendance on a Sunday morning. We don't have a okay. good way to do that quite yet. Okay. Um, we're looking at different options. I know there are different um, things you can do with Bluetooth and ping phones and taking attendance that way, um, but not everybody. At, in our congregation is willing to check themselves into a Sunday sure. morning quite yet. And so uh, yep. we're doing really well on the registrations and having them check in a special events. And that was pulling teeth. And so, but we're on the other side of it, which is which baby is, steps. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I try not to push them too hard. I don't know if you know anything about West Texas people, but they're a little stiff necked. And so you got to turn real slowly on those, uh, yeah. on those kind of things. Um, so yeah, those attendance wise, we don't necessarily do anything different on Easter. It's just that follow up stuff that we were discussing. So okay. now I have one one more for you. Uh, a little a little birdie told me that uh, you and Andrew were roommates in college. Yeah, yeah, I had the uh, the privilege to be a roommate with Andrew Triplett. Uh, the Lord used my uh, negligence to allow us to be in the same dorm room. I remember. Uh, I was supposed to be in a different dorm, but I didn't fill out the application. And so I got put in this other dorm and I saw my 
report came through and it's a guy named Andrew Triplett. And I'm like, who's this joker, right? Like, yep. and so, man, the Lord was just all over that. Uh, man, from day one, we hit it off. And man, the rest is history. That was over 20 years ago now. That's not, now, is that basketball? Uh, dodgeball? Yeah. I can't quite tell the you yeah know. so that's that's a basketball there okay. that andrew's holding and i'm i'm holding onto a chair um I, I don't want to share all the stories that led into getting us there that night uh however i'll say man we were living that thug life hard um, it, it, and it, i think you can like tell it. that we were we were pretty legit <laughs> we were too legit to quit that's for sure <laughs> that's... <laughs> and so that that other picture there is us a couple years later at, at rosa's and so um we were hungry a lot apparently but uh, just eating out, living life, living the dream. I'm loving the soul patch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He kills it. He kills it. Awesome. Well, um, love to see if we have any questions and, uh, if anybody has any, please feel free to just put them down in the chat for Luke. Oh, let's see. Okay, we got one so far. It's it's more of a statement, but Andrew said he thought those pictures were burned. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no such luck, buddy. No such luck. And while we are um, waiting to see if there's any questions that come in, um, did want have a couple uh, reminders. I wanted to uh, make sure everybody saw. The first is summit registration is officially open. Uh, we are going to be down in the great state of Alabama at Birmingham and pumped for that. But there is early bird pricing through March 15th. So uh, it's a great time to jump on and get get everybody uh, signed up for that. And then the next one is uh, next month's webinar is going to be on Tuesday, March 26th. So there you go. So looking forward to seeing everybody. Oh, and it's Taco Tuesday. I didn't. Ooh. Whoever put up the Taco Tuesday, nice work, Stephanie. I'm going to give you credit. I'm assuming. So great work on that. Um, but let's see. Any? I think I saw another pop up here. Oh, uh, Luke, what version of the mobile app are you using? Yeah, so we are on the the old version. Uh, we're not on 3.0 quite yet. Um, we're planning on moving towards it, but I thought if I told that to my software manager, if we wanted it done by Easter, I thought he would quit on me. And so, That's fair. Uh, uh, yeah, so with him doing the website and everything else going on, I was like, okay, we'll, we'll wait on that one. But uh, we're extremely excited about, about 3.0. So okay. we're ready to roll that out. Very good. Well, with that, I don't see any other ones popping up. So uh, Luke, I want to just very much say thank you for uh, for doing this and sharing what uh, yeah. you all are doing doing down there and uh, keep up uh, the good work, sir. And we will. Yeah, we appreciate it. We appreciate uh, all the support we get from you guys. That's for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, enjoy the rest of the day and uh, enjoy Easter. Hey, you too, brother. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. Take care now. Bye.